Now in the third tutorial, uh, what I'm going to cover is how to separate a more complex data set. Again, calculating the means, but this time we're going to split this data set both by treatment and as well by gender. <clears throat> we also have a set of data which was collected at the start and finish of a feeding study in humans. Ideally, what we're looking at here is to uh, identify whether or not there were any changes from the day one of the study till day 35 on one of the two treatments which I have in this data set. So this includes the uh, BMI, the waist circumference, the total cholesterol, <clears throat> and non-HDL cholesterol. So again, like in tutorial number two, the first thing we need to do is highlight the entire data set and sort by using the custom sort function. So this time we are sorting by firstly treatment values, smallest to largest. We're adding a second level and then we're treating by or sorry sorting by gender. And then add a third level to sort by ID. Okay? So now you can see all the data has been rearranged according first to treatment, treatment 3, treatment 4, as you can see here, and then by gender, 1, 2 in treatment 3, 1 and 2 in treatment 4. Next, uh, we want to separate the data sets again as we did previously. So let's insert three breaks, 2 and 3. And these are being inserted by gender and treatment. Okay, so now again we got to set up the data sheet for means. And this time we're just going to calculate the standard error of the mean. So first let's calculate the mean age. And adjust for the decimal places. And then we can just copy this formula straight across for all the data. And then readjust for decimal places. Now, I said we were going to calculate standard error of the mean, but for ages, that's not appropriate. So, in, for age in particular, we are going to do standard deviation. So, I'm going to move this over here, just for clarity. And here, I'm going to put in SD for standard deviation. This equals select the entire data set again, not including the mean that you already calculated and here's your standard deviation of age. Now for the standard error of the mean, if you remember, it's the standard error, standard deviation of your data divided by the square root of the number of subjects. And in this case, it's 14 males. Again, adjust the decimal places. And then you can drag it across. So, now that we've done that, <coughs> we can copy and paste these two rows. Copy and paste. Now, I said we had 14 males, but do we have 14 females? It doesn't look that way. In fact, we have 20 females. So in that case, you need to adjust the square root value 
in your standard error of the mean calculation and drag that across. So now for treatment number four, we can copy and paste this section again. This time it'll be correct because we're going to swap this into the males on treatment number four. Because as I said earlier, these are the same individuals who did both treatments. And now copy and paste all the rows, all the, uh, sorry, means and standard errors for the females and paste. So now the data has been set back up again as we had it previously in tutorial number two, but now I'm going to add the new aspect where we are going to calculate the difference for several of these outcomes between day one and day two. So the first thing we need to do is insert a new variable. We'll call this BMI DIFF for difference and the units are the same, kilograms divided by meters squared. To calculate what the mean difference is between the two dates, the days, day 1 and day 35, we'll enter another formula. In this case, it's not actually a formula, it's an equation. So equals, put in day 35, minus or subtract, day one, enter. Now we've got a negative value, but that's appropriate. That's exactly what we want. So now I will drag these down so we calculate the differences down as far as subject 143. Then I can drag across for calculating the mean and drag across for calculating the standard error. <coughs> so now we will do the same for waist circumference. So this is waist diff in centimeters Now we're due to total cholesterol. I've abbreviated total cholesterol as TC here. It's millimoles per liter are the units. It's always important to keep your units straight and include them in the header row. Drag across the formula for calculating mean. And our last entry is non-HDL cholesterol. Drag this down. Calculate the mean of standard error. <coughs> okay, so now that's taken care of for this data set, which is the males while on treatment three. We now have means and standard errors associated with these outcomes as well as the differences calculated. So, I'm just going to pause the recording, complete the rest of the data set as I had just done, and then show you how to graph some of these um, more complex relationships when you're looking at treatments and gender all within the same graph and including standard error bars. So next we're going to graph some of this data together on one graph which displays the men and women separately and showing two variables side by side. So what I've decided to do is to show total cholesterol difference as well as non-HDL cholesterol difference in the same graph separated by men and women for each treatment. So that means we do not need right now to see the data for BMI. <coughs> Therefore to make things simpler and the spreadsheet cleaner, we can do another function or option in Excel where we hide this data. So it's still there, it's still present, all the calculations are preserved, but we hide the data from view. Select the columns that you wish to hide by highlighting them from the top, 
right click and select hide. So the data is here, it's been compressed and it's just out of sight. So you go from column D to column K. So next, as in the previous tutorial, <clears throat> we are going to insert two-dimensional column graph or column chart. And then we're going to move the blank canvas just out of the view so we're not obscuring the view of the data. Right click and select data. So it, again it's selected the entire spreadsheet uh, but we don't want that. So remove that from that section of the chart data range and then add a series. <clears throat> so the first series we're going to add are the males for treatment 3 for cholesterol difference and non hdl cholesterol difference. The name for this series will be treatment, which we'll abbreviate as TRT, 3 dash min. The series values then are the mean for cholesterol difference and the mean for non hdl cholesterol difference. We say OK. Then we're going to add another. This one is going to be TRT3 women. And we'll add the data, which is the mean difference for each. You have to click these in the same order while holding down the control button. Say OK. <clears throat> TRT treatment for men series values and lastly TRT for women so the graph may look a little foreign to you because the values are actually pointing in the negative range. However, this can be quite informative <clears throat> because you're showing the difference. And in this case, the difference between these treatments was a decrease. So we looked at, we are observing here a decrease in total cholesterol and a decrease in non hdl cholesterol. But that means we have to adjust. So to do that, you need to select the axis that you need to adjust. In this case, it's the x-axis. Go under Chart Elements <clears throat> and under Axis and view more options. So this is the primary horizontal axis. So <clears throat> on this horizontal axis we have still numbers 1 and number 2 and it doesn't designate what they refer to. Because we've designated males and females as number 1 and 2 it could be referring to that and confuse the reader. Therefore we need to identify what they are when in fact this is total cholesterol change and this is non-HDL cholesterol change. It's represented as number two. So how we address this is to right click on the source on the chart area, select data, edit the horizontal axis labels, and select the appropriate by holding down the control button two titles. And we say OK. So now you can see that the axis are labeled the horizontal axis is labeled. And now we need to add a legend. So you can overlap it with the chart, and then that way you can place it. <coughs> excuse me. You can allow overlapping with the chart, and that lets you place the legend in the most appropriate place, usually in some white space within the chart area. And now finally, we're going to add in the standard errors for each of these. So as before, you select the series you want to add the error bars for. You proceed either to the chart tool section on the top menu, or here at the chart element section on the side of the graph and you insert error bars more options 
In this case, all these graphs are negative, so we're going to do the negative error bar, and we're going to customize by specifying the values. So the negative values we are going to enter here are the standard errors for total cholesterol and non-HDL cholesterol. So now I'm just going to pause the video and I'll proceed and add the other standard error bar so you can see the final product. So here you can see what the final version of the graph looks like. Error bars are appropriately assigned and the legend appears here at the bottom of the chart so the reader can navigate their way through to assess the data. So the only elements remaining to add to the chart would be the vertical axis title and units. So again you select the axis, axis titles. You can see that there's a horizontal axis title appeared on the bottom. We don't require this. You can delete. And you can title the axis difference, concentration difference, uh, delta change, whichever you prefer. I'll just call it difference. And the units are millimoles per liter. So here's our final product. So in this tutorial, I showed you how to hide data sets following a complex sort uh, and calculation of various means and standard deviations. Um, this is only one way to do these particular procedures. This is also um, a graph which is showing the change over the course of 35 days in blood lipids, but is not necessarily the only way to show these types of changes. However, this is the format that I like, and it's one of the more complicated graphs to create in Excel, so I thought I'd dedicate this uh, portion of the tutorial to showing you how to generate one of these graphs. Okay, I hope you find these tutorials helpful.